Good evening, every, everybody, and welcome to Poetry Ireland Introduction Series 2015. And this year, we are delighted to be in association again with the Irish Writers' Centre and the International Literary Festival Dublin. A huge thanks to both partners for collaborating with us on this, and a big thanks to all of my colleagues in Team Poetry Ireland. Poetry Ireland Introduction Series was founded by poet Theo Dorgan in 1989. And 26 years later, it is still an annual event on the Poetry Ireland calendar. It's an exciting opportunity for talented, emerging poets working towards a first collection or who are about to publish to showcase their work. Many well-known poets have come through this series. Some include Nessa O'Mahony, Alan Jude Moore, Pat Boren, and more recently, to name but a few, Duran Negrifa, Quilin Hughes, and the lovely lady who opened tonight that you've just heard from, Angela Carr. Um, so the series is twofold. For the first half, the poets participate in two workshops, focusing on form and craft, which has been led by Alan Jude Moore for the past few years. And for the last two years, we've invited poet Theo Dorgan back to share in a workshop setting his vast experience on the art of giving a public reading. Speaking your poetry not only links in with our oral literary tradition, it's also vital for the poet to hear how the poem sounds and scans, how the lines rise and fall to make their meaning. It's really important that the poets feel supported by this phase of the programme. We feel in Poetry Ireland that this type of mentoring is critical in terms of a professional development aspect of the work that we do. The second half of this series is this, the live reading, speaking and public performance of the work. Last year, we added some extras to the event by programming great new musical acts. And this year, we have decided to do the same. And we are very lucky to have been able to source tonight's music through First Music Contact. And a huge thank you to Angela Dorgan for that. Tonight, we'll be kicking off the series with Paul Brigazzi, Rob Buchanan, Elaine Cosgrove, Andrew Delos De Eaton, Michael Deneen, and Helena Nolan. Uh, one of my abiding memories of my father is being brought to visit his relatives who were all dead in Mount Jerome Cemetery. Memento. Our father entertained us in graveyards. Sunday morning, the vaults of the rich. Squat granite blockhouses ranked along the sidewall. Multiple skins of green paint over amorphous coats of arms. Receding tracery of light through the grills, the particular beauty of dust lit by stained glass over the cryptic slump of leaden caskets, two small boys, wide-eyed, at a vase of sear flowers, unexplained. This first poem is uh, inspired by some people I met in Dublin city centre when uh, a few of my mates were volunteering around Christmas uh, near the National Gallery. It's called Sixth Seal. Storm. The spire draws down jagged tidings. The ozone kiss crackling breaks. White lightning fingers surge and stitches the night. Throws columned shadows back like midnight sundials. Scrimshaw carved mushroom clouds surrender rain. The GPO's marble temple sleeps as the streets empty. He killed time during the storm. Nowhere better to go, so walked head down, wet runners loitered before the biggest painting in the gallery. The sixth seal. He thinks it doesn't understand. He thinks he doesn't understand its meaning. Stares deep into the folds of painted shadows, leaning into green screen dreams. The last day is the first for men like these, for men like me. Before security sees, says, Sir, gallery's closing, you have to leave. Then, thunders talking drum worries, store window dummies. Blind buildings born, dark in Neo's afterborn. Headlights, lens flare, wet constellations. Watercolours make rivers of roads. Taxis draining drunken songs from Dawson Street. As he returns, he smiles, his only thought is home. He knows tonight I'll disappear behind the painted door, the wife, the kids, the warmth, the window of televisions, and night and cold will be tame beasts, tethered outside, weathered with loneliness. 
Red blue flashbulb strikes, illuminates his sleeping bag, develops a celebrity silhouette against cardboard. His face glows a moment longer as it hungrily holds some electric warm acheton. No longer shakes like the plastic sacred heart scapula worn smooth from rubbing. As the lightning makes the ambulance driver shiver like some orphan Frankenstein who's come back to claim the love of his creation but did not come back in time. This poem was written on a, a car journey, driving back to Dublin, driving home at night through uh, all the towns from, from the Midlands to Dublin. Um, but don't worry, I wasn't driving. Uh, I wasn't multitasking. But I, I wrote it on the back of a, a receipt. So it's called Split Ends. You know how country towns unravel at the edges, the frayed hems of their outskirts trailing mud from the fields. The last light blinks before the road opens like a curl. Sometimes at the very point where you've left that final house behind you, there are two roads to choose from, pitchforked into the fields, not a signpost in sight, and only the birds watching. Often it's a decision made in faith. The size of the road or its shape suggests a destination. Whatever happens, you know, it's only a matter of miles before the next town shudders closer, opening its thoroughfares in a yawn. There will be other choices, other roads. This isn't really an end, is it? So this first poem is set in, a, in the prison camp um, in Macassar. Wine and skin. In a medic shed, a barrel of wine, sloshed as guys were gathering supplies. They saw the drops and filled themselves with its wet and red desire. The day rose in steam above their vomit in the grass, another's, then another's, until the party's work slowed. Guards smelled the ferment in the sick, asked loud questions, and marched me to Yoshida's. His game of solitaire was interrupted. If he lost, he would kill me. If he won, I would live. He played for almost 30 minutes more beside a little fan. By the time I made my second round around a ring of guards, I knew I'd better count to keep at least the thought of a number in my head. In sand, each boot was a sledgehammer, flattening me out as wide and long as the hard, pale space between two towns. Lifted by campmates, my body dragged like a log, my arms crossed over shoulders. As they raised my damp shirt over me, bruised from back to groin, in a swirl and current of color, they could almost read the yellowed mix of blood beneath my skin. Imagine a gray cloth a galaxy was in. This first poem is called Wild Geese, um, and I wrote it when I was um, living in Island Bridge in an apartment my, out over the Liffey, looking at rowers rowing up and down the water when I was trapped inside with my face up against the glass. Um, so it's called Wild Geese. Wild Geese. The rowers turned to geese upon the water, their fiberglass wings rising, glinting in the furling wind, spreading and folding in sine wave strands, chopped and chained to the coxswain's call. Their bodies seem simple machines, bent to a purpose. Breath and step, bone backing bone, they break for air. They do not carry stories' dead weight as they glide to rest in a world touched by friction. And although their motives breach the moment to rest on this year's cup or last week's time, their true thoughts are haunted by the effortful effortlessness of flight. OK, so I'll just start with um, one. It's an old poem. Um, it's called Keeping It Under Wraps. 
Rejoice the day for your opportunity to engage in the morning commute. Rejoice the day for the privilege to authenticate the grayscape with brow black caffeine. What do you think of when you close your eyes? Are you conjuring the person you desire? Their bed's warmth diffusing into cold metal zips on hands undressing. Do you depict, uh, excuse me, do you depict the radical job that you know gut sure you would adore? Are you reviewing the souvenir of a flawless event? Shh, if you can hear it. It's the loudness of your heart beating for the big band arrival, ushering happiness in. In the ceiling I see your face It is dimmer every springtime I'm convinced that on a stage is where I finally reach you. Or someday when the light is shining through my kitchen window, I'm a man who makes mistakes. I am a man with many virtues. In the leaves I see your face. In the trees I see I hurt you. Someday there's a place where time is suited for living. We need we grieve this, we sing until there's laughter. Breathe this, receive this, a long time after. If you give me a cigarette, I'll forgive change in weather and forgive me but I'm upset that you dress for him in feathers somehow in the darkness someone fumbled for the light switch I know how to be disturbed I'm retreating to the bedroom. All the world is so absurd that I need to give my head room. There are times I find when even daylight is a cold. Someone's daughter Hold this Control this The coldness of the water We need this We grieve this We sing until there's laughter Read this Receive 